Hi, my name is Mina Ricky. And I am Lydia Korshak. And today we are interviewing Deron Bethe, Chief Executive Officer of Bayan Brothers Investment Group. Deron Bede is a corporate business owner, real estate investor, founder, CEO of Ben Brothers Investment Group, acquisition and key principal of Tri-City Equity Group, and a chief warrant officer, three in the USA Army. By applying the leadership, strategic, and operational skills he obtained in the military to his personal life, he has created a net worth of over $12 million dollars through his business, assets, and investments. A former chief warrant officer in the USA Army, he is dynamic force in both military and entrepreneurial realm. As the CEO of Band of Brothers Investment Group, he orchestrates a symphony of success through his strategic real estate ventures. From guiding soldiers to guiding investments, Jerome's journey is a testament to his ability to navigate challenges and transform them into opportunities. His leadership, prowess, and unwavering commitment to value have propelled him to create a legacy that harmonizes military precision with entrepreneurial innovation, leaving an indelible mark on the worlds of business and beyond. And welcome to the show, Deron. How's it going? It's going great. It's great. Great to be on the show. Thank you both for having me. Yeah, great to have you there on. So we came back from Hawaii with a lot of, you know, thoughts and impression and energy, and we met amazing people. So thank you for setting the conference, the mastermind. And we're looking to see you again next year. We're going to continue coming back each year. Thank you. One of the things that I was most impressed And even from the beginning, Duron, was your story. Do you mind sharing a little bit about your background, where you came from? Because I think it's very important for the listeners to hear that. Yeah. So again, thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming out and thank y'all supporting me. And um, so my, again, my name is Duron Bethe. I was born and raised in Enfield, North Carolina, which is Enfield is the poorest town in the state of North Carolina, we talking about when I was living there 20 years ago, the household income was about $15,000 to $16,000. Uh, fast forward today, the household income is mm -hmm. about 20, you know, low 20s, $24,000. So even though it was, you know, it was 50% increase, you know, we, you know, went from 15 to 25, that's give you a perspective of the growth. You have really not grown that much whatsoever. But anyway, you know, I came limited. When, you, when you're born like that, you come from limited resources. And I had limited resources coming up. And I was also not only having limited resources, my circle that I had 20 years ago or 25 years ago, when I was in my 15s and my teens, is totally different than the circle I have now. And they say that you become who you surround yourself with. And I was a product of my community. And um, I did things. From, you know, pretty much, you know, you think about it, I pretty much did it. I got a second chance after I was, um, after I was, found myself in trouble, got locked up. And I found myself with an opportunity after I came off probation after 12 months to join the United States of the Army. And from that point, that was the first time ever getting outside my comfort zone was to leave somewhere that really I thought was safe environment. But it really wasn't a safe environment whatsoever. But that's all I knew. I really didn't leave outside those city, city limits. Um, you know, maybe to go 20 minutes, you know, down the road to go to Walmart or, you know, my parents, you know, hey, we're going to go to Applebee's, let's get in the car, you know, let's go on a Friday or Saturday. But getting outside my comfort zone, joining the United States Army, you know, fast forward 20 years later, within those time, I was able to self-educate myself due to, you know, finding mentors. I found my mentor six to eight months after joining and, and getting on the plane, going to South Korea where I was my first duty station. Once I found my mentor, that changed my life by far. And again, 20 years later, I've been able to self-educate, you know, build businesses while on active duty military. You know, I got a beautiful family now, you know, five kids, four girls and a boy. 
My wife, Pam, which is amazing. She's my rock. She's my partner in business. She's my, she's just, she's just all around person, man. And, and God put her with me to be able to support me because when you have such a, a big ambition, you know, it's hard, you know what I mean? And, you know, I told my wife when it was right, maybe 28 years old, 27 years old, I say, I woke up one day, I said, let's live off one paycheck. And I say, you're going to have to give up some things. And I'm going to have to give up some things. But I believe if we live off one paycheck, because she was in the military and I was in the military, I said, if we do this until we're 40 years old, when we retire, because it's when we get our 20 years at the due military, you, you wouldn't have to work no more. And I wouldn't have to work either. You know, fast forward, you know, 28 years old, 40 years old today, me and my wife been living off one paycheck, taking a whole military at the duty paycheck and investing 100% of that one paycheck into the stock market, into real estate. And we have done that. And it's been such an amazing thing where we have now created a great, phenomenal portfolio. We got so much cash flow. We still live below our means. We, we currently right now traveling in for the next three months. We left July 28th. We don't return back to Hawaii until November 4th. Uh, we just retired at the due military, both of us, 20 year military career, just three months ago. All right. Right before the conference, we literally, you know, we, we retired at the duty. You now we traveling, we running our businesses. We got systems. We got processes. My goal is a hundred businesses, a hundred strings of income. We currently have 65 strings of income and I'm currently right now on the road traveling. Got nine deals that I'm currently working on, business deals, real estate deals, and it's just been phenomenal. There is so much to unpack there, Dira, but did you say 65, <laughs> what is it? 65 streams of, streams of income, that's the word I was looking for. Wow, that's amazing. I want to tap a little bit on the military mindset because we do have a, a few friends, Ryan is ex-army, and we have friends that I want to send this to. And it seems that you get caught or they, you get trained to follow orders because that's a survival mentality when you're out there. However, when you are in the business world, that might be a detriment for your business and your growth. Talk about that for a minute, Duran. All right. So, you know, my, my military career is, man just successful as my business and real estate portfolio. I came in the military as an E1. Within seven years, I went from E1 to E7. And seven promotions mm -hmm. within seven years. When I hit year eight, I transferred over to became a, a chief one officer and pinned on the rank of chief one officer one at year eight and retired CW4. So that's, if you, you know, just easily, you know, that's 12 promotions and 20 years. And in order, you know, that, that's not, that's not norm. You know, that's, it, it sucks a whole lot of discipline, a whole lot of grind, a whole lot of work, a whole lot of yes, sir, no males, and a whole lot of late nights, early mornings for a salary. You know what I mean, when I was getting, when I was a W, I'm um, sorry, when I was a private, I was only making like, three, four hundred dollars every two weeks. But I was giving it my all. I was giving 110%. And when you give it all, when you give it your all, there's going to be people that's going to be watching it. One of the things I tell people is, you know, can everybody do it? I don't think so. When I when I say that, can everybody do it? Like, yeah, you can do the job, but can you be the 1%? You can make it be do the 10%, but could, what you have to do to be the 1%? And, you know, being in the military, I found myself being blessed where that I was great at what I was doing. I was getting mentors, people that was in charge, that was senior up, all the way up the ranks, asking me at 20 years old, hey, I want you to come up and be my driver. You know, just, you know, we talk about the highest ranks, you know, E9, and you got this boy from Enfield, North Carolina. And, and they say, I see something special in you. You're always out. You're giving 110%. You're getting 120%. I want you to come be my driver. And I worked for this Sergeant Major for six years. He promoted me for E1 and E6. And with that, he was getting ready to retire because I worked for him for six years. He was getting ready to retire. 
he made sure he passed me on to someone else that was, was in the leadership position that was able to take care of me and my family and give me the tough jobs. They didn't make it easy. All right. They knew I was a workhorse. All right. But even though now you look at 20 years, I maybe felt like, you know what? They was just working the dog crap out of me. But yes, mm -hmm. they were. But however, come on, though, it put me in position where that, you know, when I became a military chief one officer, I went up the ranks and I've been only working for generals in the past 12 years. I worked for two star, three star, four star generals. My last job, I was reporting directly to the, the White House and the Pentagon. And that's amazing. You know, for someone to come from nowhere, someone and, and just take a little discipline, some motivation and knowing that, you know, you didn't know anything about where do you fall at with your peers. You didn't know about a you in the top 10 percent or you're in the top one percent. I just put my head down. I surrounded myself by people that I wanted to be like. And I and I just grind and I grind really, really hard in my military career. And I took that stuff that I was learning from, you know, I went from briefing saw majors to briefing generals. And I saw how generals was able to fight wars from the Pentagon, you know, from South Carolina, from Fort Hood, Texas, and that they don't even hit the battlefield. And our, our generals can control and fight a war in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait. And I was like, damn, man, like, that's, that's pretty awesome. They not even there. And I took what I was briefed for them and I created my own KPIs and my systems, my process, same systems process that I was learning, that I was saying them was doing. And I implement that in my business. And I've been able to open up businesses, real estate for anywhere that I'm a station at. It wasn't where I was going. I was trying to put business. I never had a business where I lived at until I was in Hawaii. All right. Everything else was in different states. And I think I learned a lot put a lot of that things that I was taught in the military, put those in my, my rucksack and I implemented to, to this day. And I've been doing it for almost businesses and real estate for real estate, 20 years, businesses, 12 years. That is pretty impressive. Amazing. So much. So with being, you watch general, how they do their business, you know, and implement teamwork. I want to talk about your team. What does it take? How many team members does it take to run 65 streams of income? Right. And, and so, what so, does it take to keep them united as well? As well? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good question. So I have a, over 100 plus employees or team members. Oh, wow. Of those team members, I have about 20, 18 of them who is the team that helps support the initiative. And um, those team members is just, honestly, the people that I trust and know over the past 20 years and people that believe in me. I have, again, my wife, most of the people that y'all met my team at the conference, everybody that I kind of brought up on the stage. I have about, again, about 20 team members. Most of all my team members sell for two people. They all live in Hawaii. And what we was able to do, I believe that, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm so passionate about is everybody eats. Everybody eats. Everybody work hard. Everybody eats. All right? It's not fun, you know, watching one person eat. So one of the things is everything that I do, I, I make sure my team is a part of everything I'm doing. Word that just invest in real estate, you know, businesses, you know what I'm saying? They have ownership in my businesses. They own ownership in my real estate. I give them every opportunity that I don't get in. I make sure those 18 to 20 people that makes up my team are part of that. They get the opportunity, even if they don't maybe have the funds because they tied them somewhere else. I make sure I get an opportunity and help and assist them on getting on every deal that they want to be a part of. And I think, you know, to live in Hawaii, it's very, very expensive to have people to pick up North Carolina, Texas, pick up their family, their kids and say, we're going to move to Hawaii. We believe in you. We're going to help and support you. It's phenomenal. And I have by far the best team out there and they got their grounders, they go getters. And, you know, how are you able to 
you know, keep all that in line. It's, it's two softwares that I use. I use Monday.com and sometimes I use Asana for my multifamily because I do that with Tri-City. But I use Monday.com and then my communication system is also Slack. And we also have a team out in the Philippines that we also part to help with marketing, back office and things like that. So in order for you to have so many businesses, so many streams of income, so much real estate, you got to have a good back office, a great support team. You got to have a good team at the headquarters level. All right. And you got to have great systems and processes. You got to believe in, and you got to have a KPI for every business that you own or real estate that you own. You got to have KPIs. Mina, I had an interesting experience the other day. I was showing properties to a family with two kids and we had 10 to see. After viewing about half, the family was getting pretty hungry and they really just wanted to continue the other day. So what did you do? I went to my car and pulled out a bag of delicious Ricky Jerky. They loved it so much they were able to continue our day without any issues. All the ingredients are 100% natural, plus every strip is seasoned, marinated, and smoked by hand to give you the best experience and slap you back into the gear. But I need to buy some more. Oh, just head over to rickysjerky.com and use the discount code decode REI for 15% off your first order. So whether you're a busy real estate agent or just looking for mouth-watering snack on the go, Ricky Jerky, Jerky got, got you covered. Okay, so you hit on the real estate. We talked to, this is a podcast designed to talk to mostly ladies that are uh, professionals. They work hard, they make good money, but they have a W2 job and they know in the back of their mind that they have to put their money somewhere if they want to retire comfortably and they want to leave some kind of legacy to their families. So how can they find you? How do you guys work with investors? Uh, is there opportunity to work with you? What's going on with that? Yeah, you know, good question. So again, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've been doing it with my own money. When you come from nothing, man, one of the biggest things that I focused was always getting it right. I didn't want to go practice with anybody, money or anything like that. So just in the past almost three years, I have allowed investors to kind of come on our deals. And one of the things that we do is syndications in the multifamily space. And we buy large assets where that that we know there's cash flowing in great areas, strong demographics, where that we can, we know that the building's going to continue to appreciate. It's going to cash flow. We're going to give them the depreciation. We also buy properties where that we can share upside. And two ways that people can invest is definitely on the multifamily side, but I'm also working on and about to release our own and new franchise. And it's going to give people an opportunity where that on creating a franchise that kind of model real estate. And there's not a lot out there like it. Where are we going to take big, you know, six, 7,000 square foot, 10,000 square foot, carve it up and create two individual suites or studios. And, and that's going to be an opportunity. Someone that want to be a franchise that may not want to have a lot of employees. That's going to give an opportunity because there's going to be no, no employees on that business side. And then on the multifamily side, if someone got a 401k, they got an IRA or whatever the case, they have capital and they want to use that capital. And there's no asset out there like real estate that's going to give you depreciation. And it's, you know, I think real estate is super safe. Even though with rates going up, I never over leverage. I never, ever over leverage. You know, you got a lot of guys and gals out there, you know, doing 80% LTV, 85% LTV. Every time we do it, we somewhere between 55 and 6%. I'm um, closing on three deals right now. And we're looking at 52 and 55. Everything is assumable, low risk. And I'm okay with that because I'm okay with raising the capital because I want to be able to sleep at night. I want to make sure that my investors get great return. We buy cash flow assets in great areas. And we can help people with 401ks, uh, military. You've got for a savings plan, we can show you how to, we got connections with equity trust, which can help get them to a self-directed IRA where they can take their retirement while independent and convert it over 
And so they can invest in multifamily, can invest in businesses. And all that money that, if as long as it's a Roth, you know, all that money is going to grow tax free. Yeah, that is fantastic. And we'll talk more about the 55% LTV in our next podcast between Didi and I. So we can explain to people why is that such a, yeah, it's almost, it's almost plainly too safe. You're probably leaving a lot of meat on the bun, but that's the way you feel comfortable. Jerome, it sounds like, well, I actually want to ask you more if you can share more information about that franchise is coming up because you, okay, it's, it's going to sound repetitive, but that's how you know it's true. It sounds like you are really wanting to give value to the hairdressers. And where does that interest comes from? Yeah, so I'll give you a little bit about the franchise and I'm tell you where it came from. The franchise is going to be called Treasure studios t-r-e-a-z u-r-e treasure studios and um what we're doing is there's other competitors out there in the space you have my salon suites you have phoenix salons you have sola and you have image those are the competitors everybody got the same model all right what we do is take large spaces and seven thousand ten thousand square foot spaces you carve it out create them to individual suites. However, though, everybody saying like, listen, come over here, be your own boss, be your own boss. Because right now you're working for the man or the gal or whatever. You right now, you go in, get your hair done, your nails done, it's 10 other people in there, y'all paying commission or they taking whatever. We saying, listen, we're going to create these suites. You're going to become your own boss. All right. And when you come your own boss, the only thing you're doing is paying a weekly rental fee. That's it. What you make is what you make. All right. However, come. The problem is that everybody's doing the same exact thing. There's no difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disrupt the industry because we're going to teach people how to become true entrepreneurs. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to create systems. We're going to bring, we're going to outsource and bring in people like my CPA. All right. Ceteris, bookkeeping.com. We're doing partnerships with all these people so they can not only be their own boss, but we're going to have an app where they can be able to log on the app and request access. So if Lydia, if you come in and you say, listen, I'm a new hairdresser, all right, fine. But do you know how to create an EIN? Do you know how to create an operating agreement? Do you got bookkeeping? How your 401k look? Do you got a 401k? Do you got an IRA? You got to sell. So we're going to give them the tools, the resources, everything when it comes to financial literacy, we're going to give them everything. It's all we're going to give them the support. Just like right now we own, we're doing this webinar. We're going to be doing webinars bi-weekly so people can join. And I can have a CPA from California hopping in and say, listen, Lydia, you should be writing off your gas. You're doing your cell phone. You should write this off your, your product. Oh, yeah, you understand that. But did you know you can also do this and this? Do you know you can use your kid because you're making so much cash doing there that you can put your kid on your payroll and you can income shift and have them do marketing on Instagram? That's how you pay them. All right. So those are the things that we're going to teach stylists that no one is out there doing. And we're going to be really, really great. And that's going to be my fun. That's, it's going to be great. And where that come from helping people is I've been I am faster way to help money makes money. And I became fashionable when I left home 20 years ago to open up my, my first retirement account. I was 20 years old and I put $250 and I saw it $250 turn to $253 in a couple of days. And I've been fashionable since then. And I want to teach and help people. And that's what I do. That's pretty impressive. If we have listeners who are very busy professionals and they want to invest with you, in this concept or any other concepts, how can they do that? And how can they reach out to you? All right. So two things, everything has been revamped right now during this interview where that we are redoing everything, my whole branding, but you can find me on Instagram. My first name, Deron dot, but they, I am the only Deron, but they other than my son, <laughs> you know, saying that's out there. So I got a very unique name and, uh, I used to hate my name. <laughs> 
And I'm glad that I got a unique name because anybody can easily find me as long as they spell my name right. I'll pop up where it's on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, com or DuramaThink.com, we have, you know, Instagram. You go to B-O-B Investment Group to as well. That's my business website. But, you know, just, just reaching out. Right now, I have really, because of you ladies, I like y'all so much, that I really have, you know, just at the conference and now have I talked about because we in the background with our head down. You know, I just flew out to Dallas, found three locations, you know, to get these things going. But we in the background just crying, all right? We ain't going to, we're going to, we're going to bring investors on after I build the second, I mean, the third one. That's when the investors come on because we're going to put our own capital, own money. But if there are people that are interested in this concept, again, this is a no, no employees concept. You have zero employees. All right. Zero. The only thing you have someone to come in and clean and a maintenance person. Like whenever there's something lights need to be changed or whatever the case may be, this is a hands down by far closest thing that you can get into the real estate background when you're running a business. So are they going to own the the real estate, Duran? Right. So there's two options of buying the real estate and leasing the real estate. You can do a 20 or 30 year lease and ask the landlord to give you TI, tenant improvement allowance that, that will help pay for your bill costs or you can own the real estate. One of the things that we're doing right now in negotiation, downtown Dallas, where that we are almost to the point where we'll be owning our first location. It's a standalone building where that we'll own it, get some good, you know, good debt. And yeah, but yeah, the goal is to own the real estate and control, take all the depreciation and, you know, make as much money as possible and just continue to repeat. And it's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I apologize for getting into the weeds, but that sounds like a great opportunity. I'm thinking of the building across the street from this new upcoming gentrification area where there is no that much services. It's just the people that are local, that are hairdressers are getting overwhelmed because they, they are not used to having all these new people coming in. So anyways, what a great idea. I'm going to share it with some, some of my friends for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And thank you again for coming over here. And, you know, we'll do a link if anybody wants to reach out to you and ask you questions, because I do believe that you also offer mentorship, right, to people as well. If anybody wants to come in, you can mentor them. Yes, we we do mentorship and we also mentorship coaching, you know, I'm on everything. But one of the most pride and joy is the military, because obviously I did military. So we are embedded with the called career skills program where that we military people that are currently transitioning within six, well, within 12 months, they can apply and the military have a program where they can come join our business where they, they can say, I listen, I want to learn about multifamily. I want to learn about franchises. I want to learn about luxury vacation rentals, you know, marketing, any business that I got, we can have them come in, they can intern with us for six months. And the military is, you know, you, you can't pay them. That's their place of duty. Uh, it's a great program. I went through the program a few years ago and myself, you know, and then when I was going through, I was actually building my program up. And then we get a lot of military that we are able because, you know, military, I know, you know what I'm saying, get paid on the first, 15th. You know, you've been doing this job since you was 18, 19 years old. You may be a little nervous about a little, no, you may be nervous that, you know, you don't know what's out there. You know what I mean? But it's a whole world in the civilian life and it's been phenomenal. And I just, I just want to, you know, also help military as well. Duran, I just want to salute you for the work you do, for the sharing, for the caring. I'm just mesmerized by, by your big desire and how you just work smart and hard and put yourself in situations that are not comfortable to to get them through. I'm just, it's very inspiring. It's very humbling. It's very, it just makes me want to finish the conversation so I can get back to work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Yeah.